And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remix, episode 65. I was going to say, yeah, because you didn't sound sure. Yeah, no, I, I, totally had a, I totally had like a, an Alzheimer's moment where I like wasn't sure where I was. I don't even want to know. It's just weird. Apparently, because we're in your living room. I know. I'm your host, Baby <laughs> Brian Adams. Join me as you know my co-host, Partner in Crime. Didn't you just say my name? I could have sworn you just said joining me as Junior, my co-host and partner in no. crime, and then you pointed at me. No. I was like, why would I say my name if you just said I don't. Th- I, I'm pretty sure I didn't say your name. Well, I just did. The true that? All right. Let's so, do uh, it. Let's do it, buddy. Let's do it. You know, um, last week, um, I'm just going to jump right into here. to our main topic for the week. Uh, I'm going to be all loose. Loose like a goose. Last, last week was... Because I got room now because I haven't nice. lost all, those, all that poundage. New York Comic Con. Slim. Sl- slim itching. and trim. S- slimmer Junior. You've you've lost you've lost weight, so you can put it back on. Eating all those good ass meals coming up. Thanksgiving, yeah. Thanksgiving, Christmas, yeah. Sneaking in some Halloween candy here in, in a week. Shh, you know it. Yeah. But anyway, newer Comic Con. Last week. Mm-hmm. Last weekend. Yeah. Um. That's like a whole week's event, isn't it? Yeah, almost. Just, just damn near. And for and you know, I, I read uh, on Forbes dot com that they had record breaking attendance. I this heard year. that. Yes, I mean and, that's um, good for comic. Yeah, the comic it, industry in general, I think. That's it's great. The thing that's sad is the news coming out of Comic Con totally underwhelming. Really. Totally. Like nothing really like. Oh my God! You know there was nothing like, at least, and I scoured the internet these last couple of days putting to, to the show together for today. Yeah, and I found nothing. Huh? And like you know, usually you can type in, you know, uh, you can hit Google New York Comic Con 2015 news. Yeah, and all kinds of stuff pops up. Right, right. Nothing. All that popped up was the attendance thing on a couple of people, and Newsarama. And like all of the cool toys that were announced. Yeah, That's nothing. one thing that I think is funny. Nothing. Is that now these conventions, New York Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, are all about what brand new toys are coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, as opposed to comic news. Yeah, it was, it was completely lacking. Um, very underwhelming con. I don't know what... The only thing that came out of New York Comic Con that I saw that I enjoyed very, very much... Is the SH Figure Arts classic '80s Ninja Turtle figures coming out? Those the ones dude that like the cartoon must owns. Oh yeah, I saw those, and I mean, as as you know, I collect Dragon Ball Figure Arts. Right. I'm on that dude. I got the Power Rangers Figure Arts, and then I'm ashamed to admit that as a huge Turtles fan, um, well, I, I I guess not because I was being fiscally responsible at the moment, but I missed out on the four Rovoltech Turtles. Yeah. Which really, really bugs me. But yeah, those are really nice. Yeah, I know. And I love uh, I was considering getting knockouts of those. Or knockoffs, knockouts, <laughs> knockoffs, but uh they don't really look all that great. Um I've gotten into like watching toy reviews now. Yeah. Outside of our own before I purchase things. Yeah. And I've really that's really done a lot. The knockoff figure arts Vegeta uh-huh. I was gonna buy because he goes for like two fifty, three hundred dollars. But you can get a, a the, it's the company's called the Tong okay. for like thirty bucks. Nice. But the paint applications on them suck. <laughs> the skin color, like from the skin tones from the face to the neck, are different colors. Oh man! And the head pieces, like you know how you could change the faces. Yeah. The head doesn't totally. The hair doesn't completely go on all the way. Ah. Like from a distance, it looks good. It's like back in the day. I don't, some this is gonna date me. Uh. Wayne's World on SNL. Right, right. When they used to call girls the scuds. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because from far away it looked good, but you get up close and it's blowing you up. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway, totally looking forward to those turtles. Does it disappoint you that they didn't do uh, slightly different color schemes on them, though? A little bit. Like, I, I was... Like how the Nick Turtles have different shades yeah. of green? Well, and even the original Playmates Turtles, I believe, don't, yeah. didn't they slightly have different shades yeah. of green? Yeah. So it makes me wonder... Like, Mikey was the darkest green. Right. Leo was like an olive green. Raph was a light green, and Don was brown. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, do you think that maybe they'll go back and address that before those figures come? 
out, or do you think that's just you know because it was be cool. just a, a display thing? That would be cool because they um, look all identical they with did. the exceptions of their their masks, their masks, and um, but I mean their belts. Yes, here's my thing with it. If they're really going for the purity of what the cartoon was, mm-hmm. then no, don't change anything. Because in the cartoon, they were all the same tone. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I, You know, it's been so long since... They were all the like that dark world. green. I mean, the figures that they showed at New York Comic Con were like very bright and fluorescent, like almost yeah, a very, neon green. They looked so cool though, man. They and, did. They did. And the articulation on those things, you could only hope that knowing that they're going to do those, that maybe we'll get... A shredder, a crank. I'm not holding my breath on those only because steady. of the Power Ranger ones. Yeah. Because it's like when it was at a C2E2, uh, Tamashi Nations Bluefin was there. Mm-hmm. And I walked up to one of the guys and I asked, like, you know, one of the bigger guys. And I was like, hey, you know, are you a guy to talk to about upcoming product? Blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah. So I says, your Power Rangers line is doing great, you know. Um, and I know you've got that uh, Figure Arts Zero Green Ranger statue coming out, followed by the Red Ranger. I was like, can we expect more Ranger characters? You know, because I know, like, they did, um, uh, like, the Japanese releases. They did, like, Operation Overdrive figures. They've done a lot of different Power Ranger versions. Mm -hmm. But as far as Mighty Morphin goes, I was like, can we get, like, some villains? Can we get a Goldar, a Rita, a Lord Zed, you know, some of the monsters? Right, totally. And he says, no, because that line underperformed. I was like, what? Oh, wow. And he's like, same thing with the uh, Figure Art Zero. Uh, they didn't get as many pre-orders on the Green Ranger as they thought they were going to get, so they canceled the Red Ranger, which I was disappointed. That's a bummer. Um, I remember my mom bought me the Green Ranger as a um, gift for me leaving the comic shop. Really? Yeah, she was like, well, I know, you know, that you really enjoyed working there, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But, you know, here, you know, here's the money, buy yourself that statue. I'm like, sweet, thanks, mom. And then the statue came in, and it's, like, this big. Oh, it's all tiny. It's a small... I mean, it's detailed. It looks beautiful, but it's just small. It's yeah, the size see, of the figure that's, arts thing. That's one of the things when I first bought the figure arts. I think that's what probably detracted a lot of people from pre-ordering uh, the Red Ranger or even buying that Green Ranger when the they size. saw the size yeah. of it. Like, what? Yeah, well, it's, it's hard to... To, you know, justify spending the kind of money that they cost for that stuff. Well, that the statue, the I believe, was like thirty nine like, yeah. ninety nine or something. Yeah. It was a small, it was a cheaper price statue. But, I mean, I would love to see them do more villains. I think that's kind of like one of the failings of their Dragon Ball Z line, which is highly popular, is that they're only doing, like, the really, really main characters. Yeah. And they haven't really gotten into, like, all the villains. And, like, they, and the thing is, instead of putting a, a character, like a, a villain, or a or minor character in that slot, they're going to go ahead and give you another version of an existing character right. already. You're going to get like a fifth or sixth Goku or Vegeta. Yeah. You know? Like, why? What, I, I want to see other characters. I like how this episode of the Spinner Rack so far has been technically an episode of Let's Talk Toys. Pretty much. <laughs> well, and, and that really is go, it really serves to the underwhelming amount of news that came out of comic-con right as far as comic based even movie based it was really light yeah um were there was there any other news from for toys specifically coming out of comic-con that you're aware of being the resident toy guru the uh prototypes for the uh batman versus superman stuff everybody's okay, yeah. going crazy over that, that yeah. stuff those look pretty good um i don't know calling me a toy guru like that i think alex might take offense to it yeah then again no well, he's he's not really a part of this show. All right, okay. I called you this show. So gotcha. Between the two of us, you would be the toy guru. Gotcha, okay. I'll like, you. it's kind of strange. I've become the comic book guy, and you've become the toy guy now. Not really strange, believe it or not. I planned it that way. Oh, yeah? I told you this. Was that the plan? That was the plan. Right? I can, I'm not going to argue. I, I passed the mantle on to you. Nice. I can dig it. So, moving on to our first piece of news coming out of Comic-Con. Um, when Jessica Jones hits Netflix, um, you know, there's been this mystery surrounding who, uh, Carrie Ann Moss will be playing. And apparently she is going to be playing, um, Jaren Hogarth, Hogarth. Okay. So she is a gender swapped version of Iron Fist's attorney and confidant. Right. Which is more Iron Fist dropping... Obviously, building up to the eventual Defender show that they'll have. Mm-hmm. 
Um, still, I haven't heard anything about there being an Iron Fist show. Um, Iron Fist was um, featured several. There were several connections to Iron Fist featured in Daredevil. Yes. Um, for those you know that picked it up and didn't, I mean, the Street Drug was the name of one of his uh, one of his villains or his arch foes. Um, but there's really, you know, outside of her or that character, there hasn't been really any mention of Danny Rand. There's been no casting of the character of Iron Fist. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so, you know, there's, there's the, so you've got a, a gender swapped character, not too big of a deal. Uh, Thunder and the Agents of Avatar. Um, I guess there's going to be, uh. A new movie coming out for it, possibly a television franchise. Um, it was for those that don't know what Thunder and uh, did I say the Agents of Thor? I think I called it Thunder. Thunder. The, uh, Thunder and the Agents. Of, it's just Thunder Agents. I don't know why my brain's somewhere else. I mean, it's what happens when you read and talk at the same time. Um, so Thunder Agents. Uh, it's uh, like. Uh, Created in partnership with the United Nations, it was described as Jason Bourne meets the Avengers. Hmm. Um, the franchise reportedly will include movie and TV projects and a cameo by from Stan Lee. Really? Which is kind of strange considering that it's a DC property. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Stan Lee has anything to do with Thunder Agents. Maybe he forgot. Yeah. He's, he's at that age now where he... They're just all the same to him, you know? Yeah, totally. Uh, Dark Horse has secured rights to Avatar. Avatar Last Airbender? Avatar, no. Avatar, James Cameron's Avatar. Okay. So, apparently, um, they're going to be prepping a bunch of series coming out. Now, that movie was good. Mm -hmm. Highest grossing film of all time? I don't think I would want to read a comic book based on it. No, I... I don't in any even, way, shape, or form. I don't Whether even it's a want prequel to see the, or uh, whatever. I don't even want to see the sequels that James Cameron's planning on making. Oh, I do. Yeah, I wasn't because if the first movie was that good, why not watch a sequel? I didn't think it was that good. I liked it. I'm one of those people that was on the like. I really feel like, and I think this plays into a lot of how people um, perceive things in society today. Is when you get bombarded with an overwhelming amount of, oh my god, this is so awesome. And it builds up this level of expectation in you, yeah. and you see it, and it's just you're expecting like to be blown away, yeah. and you're not. Like, my biggest problem with Avatar was it was Fern Gully. <laughs> you know? Anybody that's seen Fern Gully, you'll know what I'm talking Fern about. Fern Gully, the last rainforest. So, yeah. So, apparently, uh, Dark Horse's Avatar deal is going to run for 10 years. I want to know what happened to, was it Dark Horse or IDW? I want to say it was Dark Horse. Didn't they eventually have the rights to the Nintendo comics? They were supposed to be putting out Nintendo comics. We did. We talked about it, but there's been nothing on that front. Man. They put out, like I think, like an art of like a Hyrule book yeah, for Legend Zelda. of Zelda, but that was it. But yeah, so they signed a deal for 10 years. Um, it's gonna. It, they're set to explore the history and mythology of Pandora. And, you know, this comes on the wheels of the announcement that Jane Cameron is prepping a series of, of sequel films. Right. So, I mean, you know... Well, we this, knew that. Could this be good for, for Dark Horse? I, Who knows? I don't know. Honestly, I, I won't be reading it. Yeah, neither will I. Uh, I just... I, I can't... Like, I'm know. just now starting to get into a lot of these movies that are being made based off books. Like, I still haven't watched The Hunger Games yet, which I hear are awesome movies. Uh, um, I wouldn't go so say as, as far as to say awesome, but they're good. I watched uh, Maze Runner. I watched Maze Runner and it was I okay. I just watched that it on Friday because they were playing it at the uh, tattoo shop. Yeah. I followed, uh, pre, uh, preceded by Office Space. Nice. They gave Office Space first and then they they showed Maze Runner. Well, they started giving Roll Bounce first, that little Bow Wow movie. Right, right. I saw that. I started watching it. I was getting into it. It's a good like, movie. Yeah, I was like, this ain't bad. It's not bad. And then the, the tattoo South artist came in, decided to go ahead and just change the channel and then walk out of the room again. Nice. And he changed it to Maze Runner. Yeah. I was like, dude, I was watching Roll Bounce. But then I started watching Maze Runner. I was like, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, it's not bad. That was, was one of those, you know, there's a lot of these tween flicks coming out now. 
Yeah, that happened. are scheduled to be trilogies because you're like, oh, you know, like, uh, yeah, it's like I don't know if I'm, and then you watch it like it's not that bad. Uh, Superman, Batman, or Batman, Superman. I'm sorry, getting a new creative team. Um, I, I you know, honestly, the book has been lackluster for me. Um, I have not enjoyed that comic book since it relaunched. It's just I don't know. But uh, Tom Taylor, who has uh, been writing the uh, alternate reality version of the heroes in Injustice Gods Among Us, uh, is finally getting his crack at some mainstream books. Um, he's taking over for an arc in 2016, teamed up with Roberts and Rocka. Um, it's going to be a set story set in Batman and Superman's distant past. Um, you know, Yannick Paquette's doing covers. I wish that guy was doing interiors because then I might be a little more excited for it. I love that guy's artwork. Yeah. Um, you know, who knows? It's you know, it's just it's just a single story arc at this point, but it is time to be uh, coming out around the same time as Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice, and it's going to deal with you know their something that shakes the bonds of their friendship early in the Batman Superman relationship. Mm-hmm. So it could be interesting. It could not. I mean, it might be good. Obviously, in that Injustice comic book has been running for a while since the game launched. Right. Um, I didn't, you know, usually tie-ins like that. That kind of stuff just fades away. Um, and I've heard from a lot of people that's really a strong title. I just, you know, when, when titles get so deep like that, and it's been running for a few years, it's kind of hard to want to jump into it. But, you know, sometimes. Marvel announces a new mini event for the spider women that's actually gonna be the name spider women um i guess they're trying to you know jump on the the popularity train of spider gwen and silk and spider woman which actually i didn't know silk and spider woman were really all that popular i knew spider gwen is just like this insanely popular thing i quite don't understand because i really don't like the book um of course then that could be those new readers that are in it um, it's going to be bookend like Marvel likes to do with an Alpha and Omega book. Mm-hmm. And then it will play out through um, Silk, Spider-Gwen, and Spider-Man. And it'll be starting in t- early 2016. Spider-Man or Spider-Woman? Spider-Woman. I'm sorry. Spider-Woman. Yeah. So, Spider-Women mini event for the Spider-Man female side of the universe for those three titles plus the Alpha and Omega. Nothing on what it's going to be about it. But um, the funny thing is, is with the limited art that they put out spider woman doesn't look pregnant which anybody that knows with the newly launched anad <laughs> that uh she is which is just weird idw has uh acquired the rights to micronauts and rom and has revealed the creative team um rom's relaunch will be written by christos gage and chris royale with art from uh David Messina and Paolo Villamelia. Mali? I probably slaughtered that poor dude's name. Let me see. <laughs> Villamelli. Villamelli. I don't know why I read that wrong. And then Micronauts will be Colin Bunn and David Balian. Um, They're going to premiere both books on Free Comic Book Day. I'm actually excited about that. I liked Rom Space Night when I was a kid, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I've kind of wondered where where and when those would show back up, especially since Marvel is kind of teased and hinted and, like, you've, they've dropped the Space Knight here and there. Yeah. But Rom has never been attached to it. So, obviously, now, decisively, we all know IDW's picked up that ball. Um, <clears throat> as part of a celebration of the uh, upcoming 75th anniversary of Captain America... Which is kind of weird. That I, I didn't actually know that Batman and Superman were... Well, I knew Superman was older than Captain America, but I didn't know Batman was. Well, actually, now I feel stupid just saying that. Because, I mean, obviously... You make me sick. I, I really thought Captain America was about, like... Well, no, because Captain America was in the 40s. Wasn't he? World War... Which one was Hitler? Two. World War Two. yeah. 40s, 50s, whatever. Yeah, it was 40s. It was 40s. 40s. Well, still, I thought... I mean, I knew he wasn't owned by Marvel originally... So I thought maybe, but I had no idea. But anyway, so they're going to another mini event from Marvel, this time uh, focusing in the Avengers corner 
Um, that's one thing that's like really turned me off to the big two. Mini events? Just events in general. You know, like, why can't you just write the story and have it play out instead of announcing that it's this big event? But then again, when that happens, you get, you, you get the other people who say, well... How is this event going to sell if you're not promoting it? Right. But you're promoting it to... Ah. Well, what I don't understand is why don't they just call it a crossover? Why does it have to... Why did they have not coin the phrase mini event? Why not just call it a crossover? Because mini event sounds like a big deal, where crossover sounds like you're going to be spending a lot of money on a lot of books that you don't normally buy. Okay, that makes very valid sense. Um, you know, they're not... This has no interest for me. Um, some of the mini events they did last year were good, um, or the year before. I don't remember when Battle of the Atom was that ran through the X Men books. Uh, about two years. I right liked now. that. That was really good. Uh, earlier this year, they had the Black Vortex, mm-hmm. um, which was Guardians of the Galaxy and all new X Men. I think. Don't get me started on that because that I'm not was, happy really with good. Guardians right now. Yeah, current Guardians. Yeah, with the whole oh, Venom. Just, and... Yeah, just hold on. We'll we'll yeah. get to that. We'll we'll get to it. Trust me. But anyway, so an Avengers mini event running through all the Avengers books, uh, Avengers standoff. Um, seriously, it sounds like the Avengers meet um, Pleasantville if Pleasantville had a dark secret. Because that's pretty much the pitch, is that you know the Avengers uncover the dark secrets of a small town. Uh, it sounds ridiculous. Um, it's going to take off. Uh, it's going to be bookend by two standalone issues. I'm sure it'll be an Alpha and an Omega, because that's what Marvel likes to do. And it's going to take place across the entire Avengers line. Uh, I, I, you know. The very first Alpha and Omega books I ever bought from Marvel, which I still own and I love to this day, are the Age of Apocalypse ones. Yeah, those are the first ones I remember, and those were good books. And then they did the Maximum Clonage Alpha and Omega. Yeah. I got those two. Uh, Jessica Jones' first episode was actually um, debuted in its entirety. Really? Comic Con, yeah. They oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's the whole right. pilot episode. What was the fans' reaction to it? Uh, apparently, that trailer was very underwhelming. Yeah, apparently people, you know, were stoked about it. Um, you know, it earned high marks from you know the viewers, and uh, people are calling Kristen Ritter's performance is stunning. Hmm. And then they, you know, they they credit the it being great to the dark tones and the chemistry between the leads. So I mean, we'll see. You know, is Jesse's Jesse Pinkman's junkie girlfriend going to be a good Jessica Jones? Well, I like I the guy that they cast as Luke Cage. I yeah, so do I. I don't know his name, um, but it looks good. Uh, I'm looking forward to that show just because, you know, they did. I figure if they can take Daredevil and make such a tremendous show as they did, then I, I'll, I'll give them some faith that Jessica Jones could be good. But that teaser uh, was just totally underwhelming. Yeah. Like, Both if you're of trying them. to be like, oh. The one where she's sleeping yeah. and crushes the clock, and then the other one where she's fighting all those guys at the bar. Did you see that? No, I did not see that. That one was. Really? Yeah. Nothing to me. Wow. It's just a bunch of bodies laying all over the bar, and I, like she's getting up, and she's walking to the bar, like maybe knocking a few guys down, and she just gets to the bar and takes a shot. So, one of the biggest stars of the new 52, as far as creatively, Scott Snyder. Pulo. Oh, I was close. Close, the other half. He's gonna off. Uh, he's gonna be off Batman. Really? Yeah. They're taking him off the bat book, uh, huh? No, they're not taking him off. He's leaving. He's uh, he's just going on a hiatus. Um, after fifty one. Okay. Uh, and the reason for that is he's doing a creator owned project with Mark Millar. Nice. So. Whatever, that, that ought to be a really good, yeah. whatever they're working whatever on. Whatever that is, I'm sure it'll be awesome. I feel like Millar is gold, dude. Like, anything that guy does is just tremendous. I mean, what creator can you think of that has made, had as many projects that were his turned into films? Yeah. No one. I don't think anyone could touch him. Right. Alan Moore might be a close second. Yeah, but Alan Moore doesn't count because Alan Moore doesn't like they yeah, because Alan Moore hates everything. Right. You know, speaking of, I know some of our fans hate when we tangent off, but I have to. I just watched V for Vendetta, v for Vendetta the other day. Really like V for De- Vendetta. You never watched it before? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just watched it again. Gotcha. Um, I really like that movie. I really like the book. Alan Moore, like, totally hated the hell out of it. Yeah. 
like he criticized it and the, the filmmakers and said that, you know, if you wanted to make a movie that, uh, you know, talked about the failings of, of the America's government and your country, then you should have made it something else. Does Alan Moore not realize that the filmmakers made a movie that for all intents and purposes was really faithful to the source material outside of the fact that in the beginning, Evie Handem, Hammond isn't going to be leave, go to a friend's house. She's going to uh, sell herself for sex to make some money. Like, that's really the only difference. Right. Is where the character is as far as what they decide to make her. There's not a lot of change. I don't understand why he so much piss and vinegar about stuff. But uh, anyway, Capullo Miller, that's gold, man. Millar. Millar. I don't know why I said Miller. Because you want a beer. I do. It's it's early. It's and I, Miller time. It's Miller time. Where's Where's the book? He needs to be our beer assistant. Yeah, you know. Our I'm unofficial mascot and him, beer assistant. Shoot the him book. a text here. So, uh, Marvel has announced an Ant-Man sequel. You know the title of that Ant-Man sequel? Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ant-Man and the Wasp. How original. Yeah, it's very original. Scheduled for July 26th, or July 6th, 2018. Um, this has moved Black, Black Panther back. And it's bumping uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, you know... it's uh, Actually, it's not moving Black Panther back. It's pushing it up. It's pushing it up. Well, didn't the announcement of the three new Marvel movies come out of New York Comic Con? Yeah, Untitled. Three untitled, untitled Marvel projects. movies for 2020. And Yeah, and they even gave dates May 1st, July 1st, and November 6th. All in 2020, but no titles. Any speculation on your behalf? No. I am going to assume one of them, at least one of them, is a sequel. To either Black Panther, to either Spider-Man... But they're new. I would assume one of them would be Spider Man. Well, a sequel. But it's but it, because Spider Man comes out in twenty seventeen. Okay. Well, when I think un oh, does it? Yeah. Okay. Well, when I think new untitled projects, I feel like new and sequel to me doesn't say new. Okay. I see sequel what you mean. to me says continuation. Um, does an Inhumans have a date? It does, doesn't it? It's the last movie of twenty nineteen. What could it possibly be? There was rumors, I don't know, did you see my blog that I posted about the about Fantastic, the Fantastic Four? Four? Yeah. yeah, there was rumors that it was that because of that whole uh, thing, for those that don't know, uh, Fox is currently developing two television series for Fox Television, uh, Hellfire and Legion, both X-Men franchises, and supposedly Marvel had the rights to that, and Fox only had, the rumor is Marvel had the rights to that, Fox only had the the X franchise in movie form, not TV form. Right. Um, so the, 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 they supposedly made a deal where Marvel traded them the TV rights for Fantastic Four to have the rights back. Turns out that obviously that was a rumor. Right. Um, when Fox acquired the X-Men film rights, they acquired all rights to the X-Men on screen in general. Um, so you can't just trade franchises like that. It doesn't work. You know, you need to have a phone book worth of paperwork. Right. So, no, it's not going to be yeah, Fantastic Four. Unless they do know something that we don't yet. Yeah, totally. Um, so, there's, uh, no. there's such a slew of Marvel stuff coming out that I can't even fathom what three new projects could even be. Like, and, and if this gets released and it's something that we've already, like, like, maybe they're doing, like, a Star-Lord solo movie or something. If it's some crap like that, I'll be disappointed because to me that's not new. That's a continuation of Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. You know, a, a Hulk movie, possibly? That would be good. That would be new, because we haven't got a standalone Hulk movie. Well, we did. No, I mean... Lately. Current. Current. In the Marvel... Well, the, yeah, we have. In the Marvel Cinematic. Yeah, movie. we have. Incredible Hulk, the one with Edward Norton. Yeah. That counts. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. Because it came after Iron Man. Remember, Tony Stark was at the end of the movie. Yeah, but I feel like that's like the bastard child of the Marvel Cinematic nah, Universe. it counts. It counts. Because of the recasting of the character. It counts. Yeah. All right, man. It's Maybe know. a Black Widow solo. I, but I, by then, I think it'd be way too late. Yeah. I think if they don't do a, a Black Widow She should have got a solo movie she, before she Captain Marvel. Yeah, totally. You know? Totally. 
but I don't know. That is a good question. What What in the world could it be? Like it's Ghost Rider because they do have the film rights to that. Punisher they do have the rights to that. Well, Punisher is going to be on be, TV, right? But that TV, you, remember Fong. that 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 TV universe that's true. does com- it intertwines that's with true. the cinematic universe. And that would be awesome, a new so, Punisher movie. I want to go ahead and record and say that one of them is a Ghost Rider movie. A good Ghost Rider movie, finally? It's Marvel, so yeah. Marvel's not disappointed me. They've had movies that underperformed when compared to other movie, Marvel movies, but I don't think they've dropped the ball. Like, oh, so you're, an going example, back, you're going back now and saying that Marvel didn't drop the ball with Iron Man 3? I didn't like it, but I don't think it was horrible. Okay. I mean, Marvel's set... Um, like, they've got a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? They've got a good track record. Yeah. I mean, I personally am not... I, beside, but then again, I've only watched Iron Man 3 one time, and it was in a theater. I've seen I've not watched it since. I've watched it multiple times. It's it's not that terrible. Yeah, see, it's it's one it's of those where bad. I think I was it's, going It's into, better than Iron Man 2. See, I liked Iron Man 2. Yeah, I didn't really like see, Iron so Man See, so I've got to watch... Because what I remember from Iron Man 3 was it was a Tony Stark movie. It wasn't an Iron Man movie. Iron Man... Yeah, it, well, it is. You know, and that's what bothered me. That's like I going liked, to see a Spider-Man movie and getting nothing but Peter Parker. I liked that it dealt directly with the effects of him coming out of Avengers. Right, right. And him having pretty much like PTSD yeah. from being in that vortex. I liked that. No, so yeah, I right, liked I that it, yeah. it really got back to the... If they're not going to do like a Demon in the Bottle-esque thing with him, they needed to do a very flawed Tony Stark movie, and I agree. that was it for me. My biggest complaint about that movie was the Mandarin thing. Yeah. And then them reneging on it. Yeah. You know? That oh. was that was just... Uh, that was terrible. And the fact that in their animated universe, they still use that version of the character. Oh, really? The Mandarin? Yeah. It's pretty bad. Now, when you say their animated universe, do you mean the, the ones that come straight to home video? Or do no, you mean like, like the Disney cartoons. Oh, really? Yeah. So they, they'd still use uh, the, the Iron Man 3 version of Mandarin? Yeah. Wow. See, I didn't know that those cartoons intertwined. Yeah, they, they kind of do. They put out... Oh, by the way, that Guardians of the Galaxy cartoon? Horrible. Really? Oh, my God. It's terrible. The voice acting on it's just crap. You know what I'm looking forward to? Which I'm sure every other Marvel fanboy is? Civil War. I'm totally stoked to see Civil War. They have to... Because st- Spider-Man appears in there. Yeah. They have to start name dropping. Even before, you know what I think they should have did? Even They can start doing it with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Is name dropping the Daily Bugle and stuff like that. If they're going to go that route with, with Peter. Right. You know? But I just think at least name drop it, even if Peter has nothing to do with it. So you, so true fans be like, okay, Daily Bugle, Spider-Man reference. I get it. And you're just warming up the crowd. Man, I'm so excited for that movie. Dude, I can't wait for... In- the the Infinity Wars. Nah, I ain't worried about that right no? now. No, I want Civil War. Your eyes, I, I, I on the current prize. I want Civil War, but in two months we get the Star Wars. I know, I can't wait for that. I'm hyped. I got the day off after. Yeah. The 18th, because it comes out on on the 18th, but you know you can go watch it the night before. So I got the 18th off, so I can go watch it the day before. Yeah. Because there's no way that I'm gonna get up and go to work early that next morning. And plus, we got it all planned out. That's the day we're gonna go see the big jolly man. The what? Santa. Oh, right on. Jeez, man. Right on. Anyways, moving on. Moving on. The last big piece of news really coming out of there for me anyway was, uh, you know, we're obviously we've got coming in February. Deadpool. Uh, the Dark Knight 3, The Master Race. Oh, yeah, that. Frank Miller's coming back to the Dark Knight universe. Why? We are getting pre- a prequel series. Set in Dark Knight con- continuity that will be out in February. Um, I got three not... words for that. I don't care. Really? really? Here's here's my thing. Everything is okay. So like you just said, this is what bothers me. Set in Dark Knight continuity. Isn't the Dark Knight supposed to be what happens to Batman in the future? So wouldn't a prequel to that be what's currently happening in Batman comics? If you really think about it. Well, taking it into <laughs> account that... No, 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 there ain't no stuttering happening here, boy. Take into account that DC has went on this many worlds, many universes stick. Yeah. That's their new thing. So obviously they are going to build a, a its own universe around Dark Knight. Image Comics, IDW, Big Dog Inc., 
I love. Why? You don't get these continuity headaches. Yeah, but it, it's not a headache if you don't overthink it. Uh, I suppose. You know, I could understand the current line of books. Like, why is Batman and Superman and Green Lantern all look normal in Justice League, but they're all different in their own books? Right, right. I could understand that. But being, like, a completely different thing, like, you know, Dark Knight, this this property existed before New 52, or DC, whatever the hell you want to call it now. You know, I can, I can look past it. Uh, you know, there's also... Uh, speculation that uh, Jim Leader Jim Lee is saying that they're in the process of reviving All-Star Batman and Robin. Yeah. I believe that when I see it. And that they're not sure. And apparently All-Star Batman and Robin is Dark Knight canon. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, you might have piqued my interest there. So, And they're saying that this prequel that's coming out for the Dark Knight, which... Uh, there's un, as untitled as yet. They're not saying whether that's going to become before or after All Star Batman and Robin. Hmm. I really was a big fan of All Star Batman and Robin. Yeah, I like that. I really, it would be nice to see that get finished. Yeah, I'm not one of these people that's going to like everyone. There's a lot of. I didn't like All Star Superman. I thought that was boring. You didn't like All Star Superman? No, I thought it was boring. Really? I'm not I a fan thought, of Frank Quietly's art. Either. I thought uh, I hate his I, art. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of his art either. I thought that was one of the best Everybody Superman stories old. of all time, dude. Yeah, it was all right. Like I that story, character. like that is one of those Grant Miller pieces that I'll actually Grant stand Morrison. behind. More, Morrison. Ugh. My God, what is wrong with my brain today? I'm just like dyslexic and meshing stuff together. And I you're like, t- I just want to be done recording so I can look at my new Star Wars cars. I went tarted. I went tarted. Um, the team. For uh, the prequel, it's going to be Miller and Brian Azzarello. That's a good team. And John Romina Jr. Hmm. Who, you know, that's reuniting the the uh, Daredevil Man Without Fear team right there. Right, right. Which is kind of cool. So, I mean, you know, I'm, people are hating on Miller. People are hating on them coming back. I like that universe. I'll check it out. So uh, that's really the biggest stuff that came out of New York Comic Con. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's it's some interesting things, but like I said, nothing like, whoa. Right. You know, whoa, where's the whoa? And it just didn't happen. I want something like, oh, I'll blow my mind, but it just wasn't there. And kind of, it was kind of underwhelming. This should, this is, I'm just going to title this episode, The Week of Underwhelming Comic Book News. <laughs> Because, um, you know, we're two weeks, actually, by the time this hits, by the time you're listening to this, we're three weeks into a NAD, all new, all different Marvel now. And uh, just like that that article you sent me on, uh, I don't even know what, uh, what website that was from, but uh, very, very underwhelmed, dude. ANAD stands for all new, all different Marvel, just in case you guys didn't know. Yeah. We're not talking about NADs. Yeah, we're not talking about, yeah. We're not talking about testicles. I think they understood when I said NADs. I know. I just thought of test. Just stop. I thought of test. The wrestler test. Is that guy? Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. No, seriously, that's what I used to call him, testicles. Okay. Is he alive? No. Really? Yeah. Oh, damn, rest in peace, test. I just kind of liked that guy. You know he was engaged to Kelly Kelly, right? Uh, I did not know that. Yep. So, you know, nothing feels all new or all different about this at all. Um, Not I, even that image that came out with Captain America. Like how, I like how they, they, they're promoting it. Thor and Captain America kissing. And everybody's like, what? But then when you look at the image, it's Sam Wilson, Captain America, kissing yeah. the Jane Foster Thor. Yeah, well, it's current. Right. Like I just like how they, they worded that. Thor kisses Captain America, and all of a sudden, people who don't follow books are like, what? Yeah, like, you know? like the book. Yeah, like, I gotta go, I, I, I gotta go read this. Like know? the book who was appalled. Yeah. He was like, what the? Yeah, it's just, it's really bad, man. It's, uh, you know, I know you said you sent me this article, but you didn't read it. And uh, honestly, like, I completely am 100% feel what the writer of this article was saying you know it's it was meant to be like a a game changer and shake things up kind of like what dc did when they did new 52 and even more so with dcu 
Um, you know, people people really like to bash DC hard, and people like to be ultra supportive of Marvel, which I don't understand. And I really feel like that that's a lot of the film fans. Okay. Uh, and it's a lot of people that just are, uh, just a holes, really, for lack of a better descriptive term. Um, I could definitely get more colorful with this description no, of don't. people, but I won't. Um, it really is just like kind of lame, you know. Um, there's nothing I'm really looking forward to reading. What I have read has been a headache. That Avengers uh, Zero issue, which was supposed to set up all the coming Avengers books, yeah, was a hot mess. A yeah. hot mess of confusion. Really? That made me not want to pick up any Avenger book. Like, honestly, this is like, and many people said this with DC, with the New 52 and DCU, that this was their opportunity to step away. Uh, I'm done. I'm going to read, I don't know if I'm going to continue with Guardians, because I haven't read the new issue yet, but I've said, I've, I've heard from people on reviews that I've read that it doesn't really change anything. That's like, oh, just throw the thing in here and make Kitty Pride Star Lord, even though we know, you know, in six months or a year, or when Guardians of the Galaxy Two hits, you know, He'll Jason Peter Quill will be back. Right. It's just like, what's the point of that, man? And I know you were saying something about Venom being on the team. Yeah, I was talking to somebody online, and they're talking about how the new origin of the symbiotes is that they were supposed to be like these space knights. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. Why can't the symbiote just be an evil symbiote alien? And that's it. Well, because they have to do something cool with it. No. What, Venom isn't cool enough? They've the original like, Venom? You know, find a reason to make it interesting. No, it's... Oh, I know. Put the suit back on any Brock, get a good writer on it, and let him terrorize Spider-Man again the way he used to. But I mean, like, seriously, like, when, when DC did the New 52, like, they shook, they shook the universe up. Most of it. A majority. Because Green Lantern, nothing changed. You know, the only thing that changed of for Green Lantern really was how Blackest Night played out. Yeah. And that was really it. Yeah. And Batman, all that really changed there was the timeline got condensed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But everything else was like a pretty heavy shakeup. I mean, well, maybe not Superman too. Timeline. That was but, more of a timeline thing. I mean, they... Their and line, the, the line as a whole, was dramatically different than what you were getting previously. Even more so with DCU. I feel like this is what kind of upsets me about people, is everyone wants to poo-poo on DC, but no one wants to take the time to realize that they are actually, like, taking some creative chances right now. You know, for as much as people have screened for, for things to be different, and make, they're not... They're not jumping on. Mm-hmm. You know, so how can you expect something new, something innovative, if you're not willing to get behind it when these companies actually do it? Very true. You know, and what, what Marvel has done is a soft relaunch. Uh, Marvel has, and I think, I, I, I don't know if we've had this in personal discussions or on the show, but what Marvel has done is Marvel has taken to relaunching their, their titles because they like know one, one number one sell. We've talked about this, yeah. And that's really what I feel like it is. Because, you know, Silk got a new number one issue. Has anything changed in that book? No. Um, there's a couple of... Spider-Gwen got a new number one. Anything changed in that book? No. But it's another opportunity for people to run out. Oh, because Spider-Gwen's going to be so hot. It's really irritating, man. No, I, I, I get it. You know, and there, it's nothing's, nothing's different. So, honestly, for Marvel, I'm done. I'll try and continue to read Guardians. I will keep reading Thor, considering it's just a continue, and I, I like what they've been doing with it. I'll keep, stick with Spider-Man. I'll stick with Spider-Man 20. Spider-Man 299 is another one. It went away just to come back with num- another number one issue. Yeah. It's like, what? what's the point of all this? Like, if nothing's really going to change, and then, oh my God, my biggest gripe about all this, dude, is how in the hell can you do this relaunch when you haven't, even finish the precursor to it, Secret Wars. Secret Wars isn't done. Really? No. Wow. Issue six of Secret Wars came out two weeks ago. There's two issues to go. Is it shipping late? Are they <sighs> behind on it? I don't know. But they're and they're still shipping the tie in books too. That's funny. So it's a mix of all new, all different or a bust as we should call it. 
instead of a nad, it's a bust. It's just <laughs> crap, it. man. Wow. It's I'm 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 super disappointed with them, because I was like, you know, there were things. I mean, Doctor Strange. Granted, love that book. One good thing coming out of of a nad, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange didn't have a title before. It's got a got a looks to be the makings of a solid title. Um, I am looking forward to uh, Moon Knight. Maybe. I am looking forward to the Hulk, though. Because we are... This is the one area... That could be another they're... movie that possibly... Uh... A Moon Knight? Yeah, Moon Knight movie. There's uh, speculation that he's going to pop up in Netflix. on Netflix. Yeah. So, I mean... You know... Uh, they just didn't bring it, man. Like, and it really just looks like... Uh, an attempt to just keep the number one spot by putting out a bunch of books that have a number one on them because that sells, you know, and they're feeding into this, they're feeding into this terrible piece of, of collecting or, or collectors mentality of, Oh, it's new. It's number one. It's going to be worth something. And it's got 20 variant covers. Yeah. And it's just, that's, you're not like, this is the type of mentality that almost took the industry down in the nineties. Yeah. And to be the number one publisher in the industry right now, like, you need to be a little more self-aware. I agree. Like, you are, yeah, you might be the top dog right now, but you're also the one that's putting the dog down. Very well said. So, on that note, skip out on all new, all different Marvel now, because there's nothing all new or different about it, with the exception of a few gems here and there. And go take a chance and read something from DC that you might not have picked up before. You know, it's it really makes me sad when good books don't like just people aren't willing to take chances, but they're willing to buy any kind of crap that Marvel dishes out. I don't understand it. Hmm. And this isn't me like DC. This is not. I am a all encompassing fan of comics. Do I like DC a little more better than Marvel? Sure, but I mean, you know, everyone's got like something that I like a little more than the other. But I like it all. But I can tell you right now thoroughly disappointed in the direction of Marvel. Thoroughly. Had they done what I had speculated they were going to do after Secret Wars and streamlined their universe to be more in line with what they're putting out in movies, that would have been smart. That would have brought in new readers. Yeah. And I agree. that would have been completely acceptable in my eyes. But this isn't. This isn't. You know, now Captain America, Sam Wilson, is a not affiliated with with uh, he's at a falling out with Steve Rogers and is not a part of Shield, and he's like a gun for hire, dude. That's not Captain America. No. And first of all, why is Fal- like, and we've had this discussion before. Sam Wilson needs to be Falcon, dude. He doesn't need to be Captain America. I agree. And it's not a racist thing, and I'm not saying a black person can't be Captain America because if you look continuity wise, the first Captain America was black. Right. So it's got nothing to do with that. It's taking an established black character and shoehorning him into a role when he was already strong on his own. Why couldn't they build him up as Falcon on his own? Agreed. Especially with the awesome performance like that Anthony Mackie put gave us in Civil War. Where I like he didn't it. give us a performance to Civil War yet. Well, I mean... Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, my bad. Well, I truly enjoyed that character in Winter Soldier. Like, he made me appreciate and like that character. Kind of like how Age of Ultron made me like Hawkeye. Right. Which was one of the most redeeming qualities of Age of Ultron. But, I mean, it's just... It's just disappointing, man. Uh, on a closing, the comic book shows have all come back. We're about two, three... Yeah, I was just letting you go on your, on your tear there. Four man. weeks. You look like you were on a roll. On some of that stuff. So I, it, not that I didn't want to be interested or anything. I was just letting him do his thing because he obviously has a lot of passion and a lot of hatred for all new Marvel now. A lot of or vitriol. Or whatever it is. So all new, all different. So I just let him do it. It should be F-U-A NAD. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, moving on to moving on. less... Uh, Underwhelming news. All the comic book shows are back. It's we're in full gear. Everything has been really good. Okay. Uh first episode of Arrow. Really liked. Um Speedy dude. Like Thea's hot, man. <laughs> like watching her just beat ass and 
she's just she's a badass man i'm very impressed with that character uh just i can't get behind diggle's helmet at all the magneto yeah i can't get behind it at all and they are delving directly into some of the results some of the things that will result in uh legends of tomorrow okay so. i.e the rebirth of of uh sarah lance okay um, we're only th- three episodes. The third episode will be on tonight, I believe, for Arrow. Good strong so far. Flash, dude, equally strong. Mm-hmm. Um, I Zombie is I Zombie. You know, I right. like it, but it is what it is. It's following a formula. I, I complained about that last year. Gotham's back. Uh, Gotham is back, and haha, the Goker is not the Joker. That's awesome. So they revealed that? Oh, uh, he's dead. Oh, they killed him? He got killed. Oh, I didn't know. Knife to the, spoiler alert, knife to the throat. Wow. He's gone. Well, all right. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. I actually, as much as I've complained about that kid and a uh, no goker, dude, that kid was awesome. Yeah. I don't know if you've, have you been watching Gotham Not since the, he came back? No. Dude, he was, he was really good. That's good. Like, he was good. But, so now they're kind of written, writing an office. That kid has possibly the inspiration for the joker which i don't appreciate i don't feel like the joker should be inspired by anyone right because he's just insanity and evil incarnate that's what he needs to be but you know gotham's actually looking like uh you know i'm still on the fence about gotham i like it but there's things i don't like about it uh strong first episode back of the walking dead um the second i well, I can't talk about because I haven't seen it yet because we're recording this and it's on Sunday. So, but I'm totally looking forward to it. Um, Fear the Walking Dead. Eh, you know, man, that wrapped. I might come back for it. I might not. That's what I've been hearing. I've been hearing that Fear the Walking Dead was booty. But then they said if you kept watching it and you waited to the last episode that they aired, yeah, that it would that when you watch it all, it makes more sense and it's not as bad as it seemed. Yeah, it's it's. It's like the last episode really did a lot for it. Okay. But was it enough to, I don't know. I mean, I'll continue. Um, uh, spoiler alert. I know you don't care. Apparently it ended. They're going to go onto a boat. Like a big boat. Okay. Like a yacht. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. Aqua zombies. Where are they going to go with that? Yeah. Why not? They're giving us zombies on a plane. Are they really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? No. Yeah, they're doing a web series that are airing. Uh, they're airing parts of it during episodes of The Walking Dead. So yeah, there's going to be a zombie outbreak on an airplane, and the only survivor of it is going to be a new member of the cast on Fear the Walking Dead season two. All I want to know is how did they not get Samuel L. Jackson for this? <laughs> I'm tired of these motherfucking zombies on this mother. Complain. As he's wearing an eye patch. So with that said, you know, I mean, it's it's a good uh, good time to be a comic fan for TV. Anyway. Yeah, I was just gonna say we've got the Supergirl premiere coming next week, or was that this week? I don't know. I'm not sure if that's this week. I don't. I don't I'm not sure if by the time they listen to this, if it will air. Or if it comes out next week. You know one of my new favorite shows that just started this season is? <laughs> Has nothing to... Well, The Muppets. The Muppets? Have you been watching The Muppets? Yeah, I watched the first episode. You didn't like it? Yeah, you know... Dude, I thought it was great. It's the like, second episode was good, too. It's like 30 Rock with Muppets. Yeah, that in The Office. You know, it's kind of like... It's not what I wanted. I like it. I really wanted, like, a throwback to The Muppets. You gotta watch the second episode. So, yeah, I only watched it for... I'll check it out. I'll give it another chance. With that, that's all this week. Uh, join us back here next week for our Halloween special. Ooh. And then, uh, yeah. Ooh. As always, check out everything we do at comicsremix.com, which is live. Uh, read some of our blogs. Follow us on Twitter at Comics Remix at the Spinner Rack. Um, Instagram at Shy Town Cylon. Is that correct? Sure. Ooh. Is that his Instagram? Yeah. He's got um, a Facebook page as well, Remixed Reviews. Remixed Reviews. Yep. So like the page, Comics Remix Facebook. Any uh, questions, comments, whatever, 
Brian at Comics Remix, Junior at Comics Remix, Alex Comics Remix. Check out Remix for Reviews. Alex should be doing some new stuff sometime soon here. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, that's I'm all like I got. hooked on doing it. Are you now? For the Halloween episode. You can do it all. Oh, somebody's talking about me. My right ear is ringing like crazy. Nice. Oh, uh, hopefully it's good stuff. Hopefully. So, uh, that's it. Uh, this was episode... 65. 65. I almost did. I almost said 56 again. I don't know what's this up with guy. that. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in the past, man. man. I'm stuck in the past. Anything you want to add to this before we say goodbye? Um, no. I got it. You got it. Pretty much right. nailed it. We'll see you all next week. Peace. Peace.